This session will be moderated by Billy Koresh, who is also one of the founders of the Congress. We have Billy to thank for coining the term of One Health back in 2003. Billy is currently the Executive Vice President of Health and Policy for the EcoHealth Alliance, an organization dedicated to integrating global health with conservational challenges. Let's give a warm welcome to Billy. Good morning, everyone. Um, so this is a natural progression. We're moving right into answering some of the questions there, Jurgen. This is a great lead up. Thank you for doing that, teeing us up. Um, so to follow, we want to actually uh, invite up the, uh, some representatives from the quadripartite um, to discuss the joint plan of action. Um, we, I, some of you might be wondering, I was, um, why do we need a joint plan of action? Um, why do we need something to get the, the organizations to work together on health? Um, and I don't know really the answer to that question why, but maybe we'll learn more um, about why we need a plan for um, people to work together on health. It seems fairly obvious. But we do know there's cultural histories in organizations, and so there needs to be some effort to pull it together. I'm very hopeful because I think we're here in Singapore, and if you look behind that funny looking guy, there on the left, on the, your left there, um, is this amazing building that's got a 300 meter long pool with millions of tons of water balanced above three big buildings on a place that didn't used to be the ocean 20 or 25 years ago. Um, and that's the hu what humans can do when they put their minds to it. Um, and I think we, as our group here, have to do the same thing around health and really put our minds to it and start really working and getting serious about doing it. I don't know why the engineers have figured it out before the medical world and the environmental world has figured it out. So we have some catching up to do, but I think we can do it. So with that, I'd like to invite our speakers um, up to be on this panel. We have uh, Jean-Philippe Dope, who's the Deputy Director General uh, for the World Organization of Animal Health, uh, Francesco Branca, who is the director of the Nutrition, Food, and Safety Program at the World Health Organization, uh, Dr. Keith Sumption, who has actually very a few hats there at FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization. He's the chief veterinary officer. He's also the chief of the Joint Zoonotic and AMR uh, Center there, and he's also the leader of the Animal Health Program for FAO. And then finally, we have uh, Doreen Robinson, who's the head of biodiversity and land at the United Nations Environment Program. So welcome, everyone. I think we're going to start off with a video. So if we can queue up a little video, and then we're going to move into um, a presentation by the four panelists, and then open it up for questions. Where's Dear colleagues and friends, recent international health emergencies like COVID-19, monkeypox, and Ebola have demonstrated the strong relationship between the health of humans, animals, and the environment we share. In fact, around 75% of all emerging infectious diseases originate in animals. A responsible land use, deforestation, and climate change all increase the risk of new pathogens spilling over from wildlife and domestic animals to humans. And meanwhile, climate change has led to increasingly unpredictable and extreme weather events like floods and droughts and wildfires. And that is why we've come together to address these pressing issues. No one organization can do it alone. Multilateral cooperation through One Health approaches is a vital solution for addressing the complex health challenges facing our society. Last month, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the UN Environment Program, the World Health Organization, and the World Organization for Animal Health launched the One Health Joint Plan of Action to integrate and coordinate our work across the human, animal, agricultural, and environmental sectors. This new plan focuses on supporting and scaling up national capacities in six main areas, 
health systems, zoonotic diseases, zoonotic neglected tropical and vector-borne diseases, food safety, antimicrobial resistance, and the environment. With this plan, we are providing one health guidance and tools for the effective implementation of multidisciplinary approaches to prevent and manage health risks at the animal, human, plant, environmental interface. We have one planet and one health, and together are working for a safer, healthier, fairer world for all. I thank you. So I think if we're going to uh, queue up the presentation, Doreen, are you starting yeah. it? Yeah. You can do it from there or your seat, wherever you're comfortable. Um, I'll do it from here. Um, Perfect. Hopefully someone else is going to run the slides. Um, thank you for teeing up a plan of action that you're not sure we need. Um, but I'm, I'm going to be honest, I think we do need it because I think Wanda was just talking about the silos we've been working in for so long. And um, it, it's not always so easy to break out of silos. It sounds intuitive. Um, we think we know how to do it. But the reality is we've been talking about One Health for a very long time, but are we really doing it and reaching its full potential? So this plan of action is really about um, achieving that full potential and leveraging this partnership that's up here today to help support that. So um, I certainly won't read this because my eyes won't allow me to. Um, but, but I think the point we're trying to make here is that we've been hearing for a day and much longer that there are a lot of precedents for supporting a One Health approach. Um, and this certainly is within the UN and the multilateral community. And so the background behind this is a number of, obviously COVID raised the profile and the need to uh, do more. And I wanna say do more because this is a joint plan of action. This is not about talking. This isn't about alignment. This is about actually mobilizing action on the ground for countries to implement One Health approaches. So uh, not surprisingly, there's a list of root causes and risks here. And these are the same risks that are driving the triple planetary crisis of, of biodiversity loss, climate change, and um, pollution and waste. But these are also the same root causes that are driving up um, our risks in terms of achieving sustainable development goals. And I don't think anyone will be surprised by them, but these are the, no the naughty, wicked problems that if we don't solve them, we will not have the kind of health outcomes that we want for humans, animals, and the planet. Um, I think the most important point I want to make here, and if we haven't driven it home, we'll drive it home again, prevention, prevention, prevention. Um, that is what the One Health Action plan um, for us is about, is about mobilizing more support for preventative approaches so we don't have to react in such a, I think the word panic is somewhere on the screen. Um, so I actually will read the definition. Thomas didn't want to read it, but I will because uh, we want to make sure everybody goes home with it memorized. And the new definition of One Health, um, what I like about our new definition that we've put forth is it really focuses on interdependencies. There is no human health without animal health or planetary health. It is simply not achievable. So the definition is about it, it, One Health. This is the way of living that Thomas was talking about. It is an integrated unifying approach that aims to balance and optimize the health of people, animals, and ecosystems. It recognizes that the health of humans, domestic, wild animals, plants, and the wider environment are closely linked and interdependent. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. How do we uh, focus on those interdependence? So this, um, this is just some background. Uh, we've been working together for some time to develop this plan. And again, the plan itself um, isn't our priority. The, the, our priority is about putting this plan into action. It's been very consultative. There was just a question um, this, with the support of OLAP, but many, many others within our own institutions have informed the development of this plan. And I'm gonna turn it over to my friend Jean Philippe, who's gonna figure out how to press that button. Thank you, thank you, Doreen. Uh, hello, everyone. 
Um, I will present the, the structure of uh, the One Health Joint Plan of Action. Uh, Bill said, uh, what do we need? A plan. Uh, I think that we need a plan with uh, some references. And um, as Doreen said, we, we started the drafting with some discussions to, to set the scene. And the first part of the plan is, uh, is setting the scene. Why uh, do we need One Health? What is One Health? Uh, what are the different components of, uh, of One Health? What are the challenges regarding uh, One Health uh, implementation? Uh, what is the rationale? What is the scope? Uh, then we, we moved to a second part, which is uh, the theory of change. I will say a, lit a little more regarding the theory of change. We heard this morning by uh, Thomas and Wanda that uh, OLEP also developed the theory of change. Of course, all is perfectly aligned. The two theory of change are very uh, complementary. And uh, as we were advised by uh, OLEP for our work, uh, there is a very good connection between uh, this plan and uh, the work of, uh, of OLEP. Uh, we define what would be the impact, uh, the guiding principles, and then we, we moved. Ah, this is a theory of change. I will say uh, so, some words. It, it can appear quite complex. And for the one like me who are a little myop, uh, difficult to, to, to read, but uh, let's say that uh, uh, a theory of change, we should start with the last part, uh, number five, uh, starts with, with which impact do we want to, uh, to deliver uh, for, for the long term. And the impact here is the world better able to prevent, predict, detect, and respond to health threats and improve the health of human, animals, plants. We had some discussions regarding plants, but uh, obviously uh, they are included in the definition of one health. And of course, the environment, which is a, a very important component of, uh, of One Health, while contributing to sustainable development. So for uh, long-term outcomes, and these outcomes should be connected with the sustainable development goals, uh, we need to reduce the risk, uh, we need to uh, uh, better identify the, the gaps uh, uh, to uh, address this uh, risk. And for medium-term outcomes, we should consider the four, what we call the 4C. The 4C as uh, coordination, collaboration, uh, communication, uh, and uh, capacity building. Capacity building is so important to uh, implement a, a plan. Uh, regarding the, the pathway of changes, uh, I was very interested by the question regarding uh, G7, G20, because the first pathway is a policy, legislation, advocacy, and financing. Uh, I had the opportunity to attend in Bali the last uh, G20 health ministers meeting. And uh, it's very important to have a reference to uh, One Health, to the quadripartite, to OLEP in the ministerial declaration, which fin finally end in a chair uh, summary. The same for G7, so we really need this uh, uh, political commitment. And this commitment uh, goes also through this kind of uh, global Congress. Advocacy through a Congress is also uh, very important. I will come to the six action tracks, the six objectives of uh, our GPA. Uh, we will see it on the next, uh, next slide. So we have a, a comprehensive definition today of, uh, of One Health, and we have also a, a comprehensive uh, scope of uh, One Health within this uh, joint plan of action. So I mentioned uh, capacity building. Uh, we'll find this in action track one, which is enhancing one health capacities to strengthen health systems. Uh, when we discussed uh, sharing responsibilities to draft uh, this plan uh, on behalf of the World Organization for Animal Health, I immediately choose this action track one, which is for me one of the most important, one of the most transversal uh, to deliver One Health. 
Action Track 2 is also very important. It means reducing the risk from emerging and re-emerging zoonotic epidemics and pandemics. Action Track 3 has to do with uh, neglected tropical and vector borne diseases. Action Track 4 as uh, uh, regards uh, food safety. Action Track 5 is uh, about uh, antimicrobial resistance, uh, the silent pandemic, uh, and Action Track 6 uh, is integrating the environment into One Health, uh, which is very important uh, when we consider in particular some, uh, some drivers. So here is only an example of uh, the structure of uh, our uh, joint plan of action. Uh, it regards action track two, uh, emerging and re-emerging uh, zoonotic uh, risk. So we have objectives, uh, we have uh, a breakdown of activities, uh, we have a timeline, uh, we have deliverables. If you look at uh, the one regarding uh, uh, identify, identify the drivers, uh, you will see that a lot of uh, uh, coordination, cooperation is, is needed. Uh, here, which is important is that we have the, the same structure for the different action tracks, and uh, it will help to, uh, to monitor and to manage uh, this plan, uh, which comes now to a, a phase which is the implementation framework. And with that, I think I will hand over to uh, Francesco. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Jean-Philippe, and, and good morning to all. Uh, and, and then, and what? So the joint plan of action has defined the broad scope of work, but we know that the One Health challenges are multiple and different in different contexts. So we do need some further implementation tools to operationalize the One Health joint plan of action. And we are going to, to produce several. So first of all, what we call an implementation plan or implementation framework. This is going to be very important because we have, for example, country level, a joint UN framework for support to um, development policies. So this uh, will inform the United Nations sustainable development cooperation frameworks. And then we'll have a specific set of sectoral recommendation policies. We do need to have a very concrete monitoring and um, evaluation tool. You know that uh, what get measured get done. So we need to be, have very clear tools to, to monitor that. We will have to deal with the finances. Uh, finances from the point of view of making the case for the investment. So, so that's why um, um, our colleagues in FAO are leading on a, a return of investment uh, study. And then to look at the finance uh, mechanism and tools to be able to mobilize the resources for the countries who need that, both domestic and international resources. And then, you know, we need to make a, a case for One Health, communicate, make it um, uh, a priority for the society and for the decision makers. So that's where the communication materials are going to count. I'd like to say a bit more about the implementation framework. So the framework will have to still be like a, a blueprint and, and be general and, and adaptable. Uh, but we will need to adjust to the country specific needs. And particularly, we'll have to be clear about the responsibilities of different sectors and different stakeholders. And I think this is critical because One Health is not a new concept and, and in a sense this is not a new exercise, but we have to learn from the failures. We have to learn from the challenges of sectors, as you heard in previous uh, uh, talks, uh, not speaking to one another. So the, that integrated policy has to be there. We need to know what each sector is supposed to do and then we need to find adequate mechanisms of interaction and joint planning. So, so the implementation framework will give us some, um, some uh, uh, details on how that can be done. And I also like to say that uh, we, we are perfectly aware of the fact that uh, One Health needs to become embedded in communities 
it's not a top-down, but it's a bottom-up uh, uh, responsibility. So we need to make sure that people really buy into those, uh, uh, those provisions. Each country will have to use multiple tools to make it happen. The three pathways that uh, Jean-Philippe was mentioning earlier on. So there's policy, there's legislation, there's advocacy and financing. Policy is linked to investment. You know, for example, how are natural resources going to be handled? That's a very important policy decision. And you know that countries will find it difficult to implement them. And those policy decisions have to be attached to financing decisions, public finances, which is going to influence the private sector. Legislation. Legislation, we know that uh, certain measures will need to be enforced by legislation. For example, the handling of a traditional food market. It will require some form of, of regulation. Uh, but then the uh, organizational development uh, and, and sectoral integration, as I mentioned, is, is going to be critical. We need to have the capacity um, to make this happen. We need to have good models to make this happen. And finally, the data. The data are critical because the data have to, um, to speak to different sectoral data need to be integrated. And, and we know that that's a challenge. But we also need to build on very solid evidence because if you want difficult policies to be implemented, we have to have very good evidence base to make the case for that. Um, how are we uh, going to use this framework? Uh, so we need to start from a situation analysis. We need to start from uh, the One Health challenges that countries have, but we also need to start from the existing policies, uh, the implementation uh, uh, the One Health implementation is not going to be completely a new initiative, a new action. It has to build on whatever is there, whether it's antimicrobial resistance plan, whether it's, whether it's environmental action plan, whether it's food uh, uh, system transformation plans. The One Health approach is an approach that needs to pervade and change uh, what is uh, already there. And then clearly uh, the implementation phrase will have to uh, indicate what uh, changes we need to have in policy legislation operationalization. And then we would like to basically have a continuous uh, uh, program um, so such that uh, we have also an evaluation and then uh, back to the uh, redesign um, of the plan. And now I'm handing over to Keith. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, to, my, to my colleagues. Uh, so far, it's taken us around uh, 14 months to reach this point, and it's been an intensely collaborative experience working together with our, as four partners and with a great number of uh, experts and with the OLEP uh, as well. So from this point uh, onwards, um, we are preparing ourselves really for the next uh, major point, which is to develop uh, and finalize the implementation plan to be uh, presented to our director generals with the expectation that this will then be uh, accepted, agreed, and we move forward uh, truly with the adaptation to country level and implementation. This does not mean that we are waiting in any way while major initiatives are taking place around us to which we, are, we need to interface, but we're bringing this framework that we've already agreed to this point to those discussions uh, with others. And we're also learning from the feedback that we get uh, at every opportunity, and this is a marvelous one uh, to have that. So what are we really offering? Well, by working together, we believe that, that um, in this new way that we'll be able to support better coordination action between us, from needs assessment through to assisting countries with policy and programming, recognizing there are trade-offs, what happens at the country level. We also really, as four, wish to, to support the multi-sectoral collaboration efforts at country level, and things have to be country-led throughout. But without there being a, a framework by which our organizations really stimulate, support, and facilitate multi-sectoral uh, collaboration, uh, we feel that those investments and those changes, the co-investments by countries, 
would not be uh, aligned or would not ha have the greatest uh, potential impact. We do hope and see that there will be uh, a number of investment opportunities, particularly for low and middle income countries, where the One Health approach we believe is the most efficient uh, way of safeguarding not just health but also the agro-food systems. So those investments may be beyond the health sector, they may also be, and we would expect, in the agri-food system area, also in the area of ecosystem restoration. We um, are implementing en entities, and we have different mechanisms to support countries. And uh, as Francesco has said, we do have mechanisms at country level which enable us to take a particular role working together, but working with the other UN agencies to support country programs. And we wish to, to use this to catalyze sustainable investment. Collective advocacy uh, is important, and some of the, the references were made to the events, the types of forums in which we are represented together to present what we believe is a framework, our joint plan of action. Uh, it's a, a shared responsibility to, to, to invest between countries with their own investments and investments that may come from, from outside. Financing, particularly from multilateral development banks, international financial institutions, domestic resources uh, being an essential part, and the private sector are going to be critical. We do not propose in our joint plan of action that our, our agencies would be the routes by which finance reached these countries. We believe instead that our, by working together, we can better catalyze and support countries in the investments that they will make. And there are a number of different opportunities that are really immediately before us to, to be utilized for this. We um, believe that, uh, we, that the One Health Joint Plan of Action provides us a tool to help countries with their investment frameworks. We recognize that um, some of the, 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 the estimates for the types of financing needed uh, do not necessarily cover all action tracks and areas that we indicate in our joint plan of action, and that for health emergency preparedness alone, around 30 billion uh, has been estimated as needed, and for which the World Bank has also indicated that prevention has been estimated at a 10 billion uh, per year investment. But this is quite difficult to sort of say, where do we start with prevention, and what are those other linked investments needed to better safeguard the, uh, the health system uh, as well as safeguarding our, our natural systems. So as a quadripartite, we are working in a new way. I hope this demonstrates to some extent the four of us here together, but also working really across our whole organizations. And if I may, Chair, um, this process of coming to this point has been led by relatively few, but it's engaged very large numbers across our organizations. So I'd like to just, uh, ask you to, to, to recognize the work that's been uh, taken place. I'd first like to ask the colleagues in FAO who led the, the, the drafting group, that's uh, Barbara Hassler, um, Ahmed El Adrisi, and uh, Fairuz Lafawi to stand up. And then with that, I'd like also like to ask our, our FAO colleagues who are here, our WHO colleagues who are here in the room, UNEP colleagues uh, who are here, and WOA colleagues, if they can also stand up at this moment. Please do that and thank you to them. They represent a small part of the greater group. Now do remain standing up please and then I'd ask our One Health high level expert panel to stand up if you're in the room too. So Wanda, Thomas and all your colleagues who are in the One Health high level expert panel you have been critical to developing the theory of change in the work. And finally, Chairman, I would ask, if I may, that anyone who feels that their work can also contribute to what we're trying to achieve through these six action tracks, do you also want to stand up and indicate that you're ready to support us in our work? That should be all of you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your support. Over to you. Great. Thank you. Very impressive. I'm really pleased to see what you're doing.
Um, so I'm going to move to the question session here. I have a few questions for you, and then we'll open it up to the room. Um, and I've been kindly provided with some, but of course, knowing me, I've had to, I want to change them a little um, and put you on the spot. Um, but I'll start with you, Doreen. Um, as the kind of the newest, our newest uh, introduction to the quadripartite, now with the name for having UNEP join, which we're very excited to hear that. It's great, great news since our last uh, meeting of the Congress. Um, how do you see, you know, Getting, getting buy-in from your community and how's UNEP going to be engaged and how you see that working. Um, and kind of part two, and I'm going to ask each of you the kind of the part two, um, is you're, you work in big organizations. So there's a few of you engaged in this effort and how do you envision kind of rolling it out to the wider, your wider colleagues within each organization? I want to start with you and talk your insights into how UNEP's going to move forward, maybe Nature for Health, some of those examples. Yeah, so I don't think the issue of buy-in, um, I, I don't think anyone who's worked in the environment community doesn't buy in that um, planetary health, human health, and animal health are interconnected. I think the issue is always about what do we do together. Um, I think the short answer everyone always says, oh, we need more investment. Um, I disagree. Yes, of course we do, but I disagree. That's not the starting point. Um, I think the starting point is about taking action together and breaking down those walls. So I think the first thing we're trying to do is shift the narrative um, and create one narrative um, and create tools and opportunities for folks to engage and understand the different ways we're approaching um, health. And I, I do think um, we're a little further behind in, in the process. Um, for example, we've been working with the quadripartite partners looking at data systems um, as a starting point. How do we have data? How do we use data better together? And it's been fascinating because just break it, looking across the sectors we've seen, we understand data, the utility of data, um, the way um, we process it, the periodicity that which we can use it becomes uh, a, a burden for working together. So sometimes we just need to start and reframe the problems um, together so that we can find the solutions. And so that's one thing we're committed to doing. In terms of mobilize, UNEP is a very small UN agency. We don't have the same presence as some of our colleagues here. So part of our goal in UNEP is to really mobilize the environment community. And when I say that, I mean it's not just the UN environment community, but the environment community. That's civil society, that's researchers, that's academic, but in, most importantly, also the utility of communities, local communities, indigenous people who have a very different perspective on health, but a very important perspective on health. And um, solving the One Health problem is not just a problem for experts, um, or it's different kinds of expertise. So that's what we're committed to tapping into. Uh, and then the last thing I would say is you've seen a lot about a presentation, but really our commitment is about focus on the ground. Keith said it. How do we help countries? This isn't about helping our institutions. It's about our institutions helping deliver on the promise of what health, what One Health can be in countries. Thank you. Um, I'm going to jump over to Frances Francesco. Um, and you mentioned earlier in your part of the presentation a little about kind of stakeholder engagement and bringing in communities. So I wanted you to kind of elaborate on that a little more about um, what that looks like, how that might work, how do you really uh, get more stakeholders, who they might be, how does this audience get more engaged as stakeholders, as scientists and, and uh, the academic community, and we have policymakers actually from from national governments here too. Uh, clearly, the, the, you know, which stakeholders depend on what we are asked to do and what we are willing to do. But it, it's clear that the One Health Agenda is a broad sustainability agenda. So we definitely have to consider that, first of all, multiple sectors in society need to be involved. And it's not a, only a health sector issue, obviously. It's an agriculture and food system issue. It's a, it's a big challenge in the, in the model of development of the food system. It is a broad environmental issue, but I would say it's infrastructure, it's uh, energy, 
its uh, um, transport, its, its uh, cities. So there's actually a lot of the aspects of the economic development that need to be involved. I think that's, uh, frankly, the biggest challenge. I don't think we need to convince the health people. We need to convince the you know, economic development uh, people. Now, how do we do that? I think it's about the win-wins. Uh, and it's about the sustainability of, of our uh, development model. Part of it is policy and legislation. I mean, you know, if we have to involve uh, um, actors other than the public, we need to have some form of um, uh, incentives there. And it's, it's, it's regulatory, uh, but it's also financial incentive and disincentive. So I think the public sector is, is the main one, and it, but it's getting the multiple components of the public sector. Then we need to involve uh, the private sector. The private sector needs to be involved, you know, because it's part of the game, you know, when it comes to drugs, it, when it comes to diagnostics, uh, uh, when it comes to vaccines, but also because it, has, it, it shouldn't be part of the problem. And so, uh, you know, the private sector, again, needs to be brought into the, into the discussion in a meaningful way so that uh, you know, in, in terms of profit, we find the right, right trade-offs, for example. Civil society is so critical, and, and this audience is absolutely critical because we need to create a movement around that. I mean, the, the, you know, we're, we're starting uh, coincidentally at the same time, coincidentally, question mark, at COP27, where, you know, 35,000 delegates are discussing uh, one single thing, which is temperature change uh, on, on the earth. We're discussing a lot of complementary issues, and we also need the social movements around that to actually make those societal changes. Academia is critical because academia is going to give us the good reasons and the good examples to do that. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm kind of envisioning one of these days we'll have the hexapartite or the or the octapartite, and there'll be eight of them up here, and it'll be great, and everybody will be working together. Um, but they are big issues. I mean, I'm looking out in the harbor in Singapore and see 200 ships out there with bunker fuel, and they're moving food around the planet, and they're moving goods around the planet, and that's heating up the planet, and, um, and we somehow have to feed eight billion people without eating the planet. Uh, so we have work to do, so it's great. Thank you for that. Um, let's see, Jean-Philippe, um, you were going into some of these, um, really kind of digging into the implementation, which I get excited about, and the three pathways. Could you say a little more about that um, and how that works and how that guides things, and the three pathways and where are you going? So implementation is uh, the key topic. Uh, I, I used to say that uh, we have to move from uh, One Health as a, a nice uh, intellectual concept uh, to uh, One Health implementation in the field. And that means that uh, the ones who are at the front, front line are our members, the countries, the people making uh, One Health in the field. I am the son of the private veterinarian. And you ask Francesco, uh, what about the, the stakeholders? So, uh, it's a team. We have to engage uh, private veterinarians, we have to engage medical doctors, we have to engage uh, people in charge of uh, ecosystems and environment. Uh, but we have also to take uh, into account the specific context of, uh, of uh, our countries. The implementation of One Health in Singapore here, uh, which is uh, uh, an already very organized country. Uh, yesterday we met with the, the Minister for National Development and we discussed uh, how One Health is implemented in this country. Uh, there is a committee coordinating uh, One Health activities. Uh, they have plans, they have a clear organization. And in other countries, we have to, to start from, uh, from zero. And here we need uh, international cooperation uh, we need to promote uh, best practices. You, we need to put forward uh, champion countries uh, to have a dynamic on the implementation of, of One Health. And as I said, we always need 
a, a high level of political uh, commitment. If you don't have your minister pushing for one health, it will be difficult to, to get means, to get uh, finance, uh, and, and to consider what we call uh, the health workforces. I insist on the S, which is very important, because health workforces not only include uh, human health workforce, but also veterinary wor workforce, veterinary services, uh, and uh, environment workforce. And you know, sometimes uh, the detail is in the detail. Someone asked about the, the future pandemic treaty. Uh, we have a chapter on, uh, we don't have a draft zero, but a kind of skeleton text with some uh, guiding principle and substantive elements for the future international instrument. And there is a paragraph on workforce with no S, which is a pity. So we have to act together to add this S to, uh, to workforce, to have people working together. And, and sometimes implementation is, uh, correspond to very simple things. Uh, it means, for example, to have your uh, chief veterinary officer uh, who has in, uh, in his contact details or her contact details, the direct member of the CMO, the chief medical officer. And the reverse is also, uh, is also true. So implementation means uh, first a strong willingness for implementing, guidance from uh, our uh, quadripartite uh, organization, always a science-based approach. Uh, we heard from OLEP, many scientists are in this uh, Congress room. Uh, we need to engage with all the, the stakeholders. We need to monitor. Uh, we need to, uh, uh, to learn the lessons uh, and to address the, the gaps. Uh, and it's an opportunity for me to, to mention uh, an interesting tool which was developed by our organization, which is a PVS pathway. PVS means uh, Performance of Veterinary Services. It's a, it's a set of uh, 45 critical competencies that uh, were able to uh, audit uh, through uh, voluntary audits. Um, I'm sure that uh, some uh, who are experts uh, who are in the room uh, already implemented this, uh, this PVS uh, pathway. Uh, so we have, we have to uh, continuously uh, address the gaps to adapt ourselves to, uh, to the new challenges. Thank you. Um, and finally, Chief, Chief Keith, um, I saved the difficult one for you at the end, <clears throat> really about kind of monitoring and evaluation. Um, how, how, you know, how do you hold each other? How do we hold you responsible for getting this done? Where's the, you know, action um, take place? How, it's a complicated area, I'm sure. Um, but you know, how do we define success? If we invite you back in two years to say, we've really, you know, let's give you a two year kind of roll up of what's been accomplished. Um, you know, what's that look like? How are you gonna explain that to us? Thank you. And um, well, the, the easiest thing to say would be when we look at the, the plan of action, there are sets of activities there, indicators, medium term outcomes and so on. So the easiest thing would be to say, uh, look at the activities we've pledged to do together and how we're doing them. Uh, we will have an annual review meeting with our director generals. Um, we would like, I believe, that that would be uh, open and transparent as to the, the progress so that everyone can see what progress we're making. But, but eventually, what do we really count as success is what you've said. So we are expecting that there would be an impact upon countries in terms of their likelihood or their actual take up of these approaches, not necessarily only by us, because we expect that the impact of this framework will be on other investments, and they will be on other regional or national initiatives. So part of our, our, our success in the end is, is counting how much has this been taken up at country level into, their, into the things which, which uh, have already been mentioned, the policy and legislation, for example, the, the change in delivery of integrated services. 
How much has new data, knowledge, and evidence been generated at country level and shared? So there'll be other things that we all want evaluated. We want to know that our work has led to influencing countries in terms of their work, influencing investments, national ones and international ones, and that there is actually something to measure at the end. So the, the monitoring framework will be partially what we're doing ourselves, but it will also be looking at uh, how much is this being taken up by others. Hmm. Um, great. I, you know, I sometimes think um, your four groups underestimate um, how much influence you could actually have and maybe don't utilize it as much. So I can see you tapping into the local Ministry of Health or WHO and saying, could you show up at this meeting because we're going to talk about wetlands management in the future and the health minister says that's before you do that to the environment we better consider health and um, so I think there's a lot of opportunity with this joint plan of action is to engage all your counterparts to really support each other we have to all support each other in ways I, I can see that having a lot of power and I don't know that it's fully appreciated um, um, by the community or by the public about how we can really help each other achieve goals. It's good to say that. Can I, if I can comment, you asked earlier, what, what are the whole of our organizations doing? Are they behind the plan? Um, well, in the case of FAO two years ago in the, in the development of the new strategic framework, One Health was made one of the 20 priorities of the organization. So what does that mean? Uh, we have a, an organization covering all sectors relating to food and agriculture. That goes from oceans and their productive elements, uh, forests, uh, soil, health as a foundation. So when you add it together, it's much broader than livestock. It, we, can, our consideration of One Health is all of those productive areas which are, are at risk at the moment, at risk and risking to other dimensions to ecosystems and to human health. So the organization with 13,000 people has something like seven or 800 working in this area right across the plant health to forest health to animal health to soil health. So that's quite a lot of people. How do we make it easy at country level? That's one of the things we're trying to do better is trying to ensure that when we work together as one, we can interface at country level with those real cross-cutting issues which are there at country level, and they need us all to be working together.